There's the world how, tour continues how, how for is, you, huh? You're yeah, I like I, I like it. I like you're the you're the initiator here, huh? This is the this is the big man here, huh? <laughs> hardly, hardly, hardly. What's it been like for you? I mean, it's been nonstop since uh, since your victory. It has. It's been good, man. It's been good. I'm I'm enjoying it. First time in Australia, and uh, man, having a blast. Man, I thought America had everything. Man, Australia is a special place, man. It really is, man. The food, the people, uh, everybody's kind. I'm, uh, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm stoked, man. I'm stoked that I'm here. It sounds like you're kind of hanging out and enjoying yourself the last couple of weeks, but people are still talking about you. They're still talking about the fight. They're still talking about the future. They're still talking about the division. <laughs> uh, and it sounds like, you know, it sounds like they have change on a daily basis, the, right? So they're still talking about the controversy, too? You forgot that one. You forgot I, that I, one. Is it still controversy <laughs> at this point? I don't know. But, you know, they're definitely talking about the future. So, I mean, give us the feeling today, because it seems like you've gone back and forth on what makes the most sense, on what, what should happen. Um, oh God, that's, that's, you know, I, I spoke to Dana White when, uh, I spoke to, I had a meeting with him uh, that Wednesday after, after my victory. And uh, it's, uh, he, I'm getting no answer from him, from him either. You know what I mean? It's, it's uh, you know, it's the, I have that there's a pink elephant in the room and it's, it's almost like, hey, I'm the champ, man. At least I should, I should be told something at least, man, out of, out of, out of a little bit out of respect, you know, but, uh, you know, it's still unsure of. I, one thing that they do want, they do want that TJ fight. Uh, Dana wants it. TJ wants it. Uh, we want it. Um, you know, that's that's kind of where everything's headed as of now. At 35? Yeah, possibly. Possibly. See, but the, yeah, that, but that's what I'm saying. It's, uh, you know, I, I would like it. I would. <laughs> you get a chance at history then, right? I mean, you yeah, get to join it, that Right, club. yeah, that, that, that's that's exactly what it is. I, I, know I, could, I know I could beat the man again at 135 pounds. I, I know... I know what I saw, even though it was 32 seconds. Um, I see, I see a lot of opportunities for me. And I don't, I'm not trying to ruffle feathers against the boss or whatever. But you sat in those press conferences. You saw how many of us asked or trying to figure out what the hell's going on with the division. So you've been in the meeting. Can you figure out why it's so like not clear what's happening? Like, I mean, you got a, you got flyweight fights this weekend. You got a guy from Brazil making his debut in the flyweight division, and we don't even know if it's. Gonna I mean, welcome to the welcome to the UFC. <laughs> welcome to MMA. Uh, again, I'm, I'm speechless, Max. I don't know what to tell you guys. I really don't. I think I think I did my job. I, I took the man out, the the greatest bantamweight of all time, in 32 seconds. If that if, if people think or believe that the flatwood division is boring, man, you're you're out of your mind. I think you know a part of it. I think it's. Uh, I, th I think we're all at fault in some ways. I think, and I'm, I'm even going to blame Demetrius a little bit that he's at fault. He could have been a little more vocal, a little more flamboyant, a little more, because uh, he, he, you speak to, I, I, I spoken to DJ and he's a very charismatic dude. He has a personality, but you put him on the camera and it's simple answers. You know, we're in the entertainment business. Part of it is us, the flowers. He beat everybody up. It wasn't, it was, they saw us as little kids. Like, okay, this is, this is the dad and he's beating up his kids. Finally, I beat him. I take him out, and but God, guys, I speak three languages, man. I'm, I'm I don't think I'm that boring. <laughs> I may do some cringy and crazy things, but uh, <laughs> for crying out loud, man, I have Nikki Bella uh, call me out, man. Come on, guys, I gotta. So the, the meeting is in Phoenix next week on social media. You know, we drink some wine. I mean, uh, you know, this is I'm bringing I'm bringing the WWE. The Flyways bringing the queen of the WWE into this in this into this position. You know, so it's. It's it's good it's good to be a fly the flyweight king right now. Demetrius didn't do that. <laughs> Demetrius don't got the looks to do that. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> wait, wait, what was the execution problem there? It was just was there not enough rehearsal ahead of time for that gimmick to put be pulled off with the snake? I thought it went well, actually. I thought it went very, very well. I even. Uh, I thought it was Dana passing the bag across the stage. No, but I don't. But I don't think Dana knew what was. I don't think he knew what was in there because Ali was supposed to hand it to me. So then he gave it to Dana, and then when Dana gave it to him, it was actually even better. So I even like shook it, shook the bag. <laughs> and if you see it, you guys rewatch it. You guys can see Dana White kind of pull his hand back. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of told him. I, I think I told him at least in the media, I was like, "Hey, you got scared, man." <laughs> But uh, you know, it, it's it's a gimmick, man. I, I I'm I'm a, you know, it, it, it's me bringing attention to the to the flyweights, man. That's all it is, man. It's nothing, you know. I'm not throwing chairs. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't. I don't cuss when I when I when I talk smack. Like it's just. I'm just a pure competitor, man. That that uh, that wants to put this 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 weight this division on the map. That's it. Is there a risk though if you ask for a fight with TJ at 135? Is there a risk that you're 
almost leaving the flyweights behind and Dana can take that opportunity to be like, well, he doesn't want to defend the belt at 125. No, no, no. I, I mean, I don't, I, it's, that, that, that meeting is yet to be, to be, you know, to, to happen, you know what I mean? I did my job, guys. Like, whether I go to 35 or not, I did my job. Amanda, they ain't taking away her weight class. Dude, I'm in a position where, dude, they just caught John, they just cut, uh, cut John Mar Maraga yesterday. He texts me, dude. Like, he texts me, he's like, hey, dude, they cut me. And this, this dude's my brother. I grew up with him. We went to the same high school, grew up in the, with the same coaches. And I'm just like, title contender. I mean, this guy was ranked. I don't know what in the world. I mean, it, it just, it, it's unfortunate. But I, I felt like I did enough to save this division, you know. It's, uh, I mean, whether I go to 35 and you guys don't be hanging me, for this, it's it's. I, I think you guys. I think you guys see the. You, I think everybody sees a pink elephant in the room. Henry, well, well, based on what you just said, like, it is. It does seem re relatively obvious that if, if they're letting guys like John Moraga go, that the flyweight division doesn't have a long-term home. How would you want to see it go out? Does it go out? Is that a perfect way to end it? You knocking out the bantamweight champion? Is there another way for this division to end? What's man, I don't know. Out? You guys throw some ideas out here for me, man. You guys <laughs> are. Uh, Where's Ariel, man? I need him. I need the nose. <laughs> um, God, I, um, I'm, I'm just, I don't have an answer, man. I'm speechless because I almost sound like a broken record. I mean, I've, I've, I, you guys saw me. I've tried to make a deal with Dana White in front of everybody. I beat this man on Saturday night. The weight division stays. I'm, I'm that confident. If, if he beats me, get rid of it. What did I do? I, I did it. I did my job. I mean, God, I mean. Cry me a river, dude. <laughs> Speaking is Benavidez a loose end at all for you, or could you move on and have you finish your career and never fight him, or do you think you kind of have to? Um, man, I'm, 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 I, I want to fight Joe too. Like that's that's that, that's an option too. Like he's he's a second option, 100. percent You know, I, I, I uh, you know, he sent out a good, a nice little text on on Instagram. Um, you know, after the fight, first he called me out, and then he kind of says, "Hey, man, I, you know, you're one of the pound for pound guys. You know, we the first time we fought, which was in 2000, was it 16? I mean, I was I was still a pop man. You guys have saw saw my growth. I don't I don't necessarily ever have to fight him again, but just for the sake that he has, according to the stats, that he has a victory over me. Well, why not? We can run it back. You're the first person to actually have your hands on both the different belts. Which one do you prefer? I like the new belt, man. You guys, you guys want to know why? You guys want to know why? Because I'm the only one that has it. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to quickly ask you about Kai. You guys have a really good relationship, and obviously he's someone that can be a big star down here. Is he someone you'll be rooting for on the weekend and kind of pointing to Dana White? Hey, look, this division has people that can draw and all around the world. Young guys like Kai coming up. Yeah, absolutely, man. The, the kid, the kid has knockout power. Very entertaining. I mean, you know, he's he's from this neck of the woods. I mean, Kai, man, Kai, I got my eyes on you too, Kai, man. I want, I'll, I'll put your head on a spike too, man. But uh, you know, I, I wish him the best. He's a really good guy. I think he has a very, I think he's he's got a bright future, and uh, he's he's he, he could be a potential challenger too. But that's all up to Dana White and uh, and the and the UFC and. See where they take this this matter, man. I've I've done my job, man. I don't know, I don't know if I have to freaking, you know, streak naked and uh, save the flyweights, you know. <laughs> but I, I, guys, I've done enough, man. I've done enough, and I'm I'm not just talking, but I'm I'm doing it through action too, knocking dudes out in 32 seconds. You keep saying that. Are you worried that like history will show that Henry didn't do enough to save it, or he didn't try? No, man. I've I, I know what I, I've know what I've done, man. Like it, I, I will I will not only I think my legacy will not just live in the sport of MMA, but in sports. Two sport world champ. I mean, ain't nobody got those credentials until now, you know. So let let the next person come up and do that. Then I'll be like, man, I'll. You're the greatest of all time. You're the greatest combat athlete of all time. But as of now, I'm kind of running with that title, man. Why? Because they have done two of the hardest things that anybody could ever do in sports, and two of the toughest sports in the world. What's it like for you having this dynamic where on one hand you're the champion, you've got all these hungry contenders who want to take that belt away from you, but at the same time those same guys are kind of looking up to you. There's almost a camaraderie, a sort of alliance. I feel like no champions ever really had that before. Um, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's th that's kind of how it feels. Like even my worst enemies were, were were cheering for me. You know, like it was uh, it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool to. You know, I was on the Ninja Warrior show in, in Japan about 11 years ago. This was back in 2008. And I remember doing the Ninja Warrior show, and it was a competition. But I remember everybody was so focused on 
having somebody finish the course that everybody was cheering each other on. And I thought it was the coolest thing because typically you're like, man, I hope that dude falls this, you know, second round. But no, it was, that's kind of how it felt like. Like everybody was kind of cheering me on for this fight. And it was, like I told the people before, it was, uh, it was like my quinceanera, man. <laughs> Brooklyn, the flyweight division, the headline. I mean, I think the only thing that was missing was for, for Donna White to say, uh, to say this division stains. How'd you do? How'd you do in Ninja Warrior? Oh man, I, 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 dude, I didn't survive, man. I, I, I lasted about a minute, but I got paid. <laughs> um, you guys, uh, go out there. You guys do your jobs, man. Continue to keep fighting, knock people out, uh, draw attention, uh, do what you have to do. You know, this is, and I tell people all the time, the flight would take down. We're multiplying, man. So it's. Sooner or later, something's gonna, something's gonna happen here in the UFC, or in, an, in another organization that's gonna give opportunity to all of us. Any special plans here in Australia? I'm gonna go to the the twelve. Was it the twelve disciples? Twelve apostles. The uh, twelve, yeah, twelve, twelve apostles. <laughs> <laughs> and the, which a lot of those actually betrayed Jesus, but we'll. Uh, <laughs> We'll give them some credit. So I'm gonna go out there, check check that out. Actually, my birthday is actually on Saturday, so February 9th is my birthday. So you guys do not forget to uh, give me my birthday wish, birthday presents. So I'm just uh, just excited, man. I'm excited to be in Australia, man. Thank you guys so much.